Hey guys, it's Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com, and a few weeks ago, I released my first take on Photoshop's brand new AI tool, Generative Fill, and shockingly, that video almost has half a million views, and it's become one of the top resources for this incredible tool. And now let's come up here and type in gray turtleneck sweater. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Gosh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So I thought this would be a great time to make a video showcasing some of the ways that I've been using Gin Fill in my own work, and hopefully you guys can apply these same techniques to your own photography. All right, the first way that I've been using this is just to remove things from images that would be very, very difficult to remove with the clone tool. So here we have a rooftop image where we have this distracting ladder on the right-hand side. And if I was to use the clone tool to try to remove this, it wouldn't be that difficult here on the red, but as I got up to the molding and up towards the top, it would be a nightmare to remove. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my lasso tool. And what's so amazing about this is I can just be so quick and easy with this selection. And now I'm gonna come up here to gin fill. Now here you can enter different prompts. For this, I'm just gonna hit generate and see what it does. It does take a few seconds. It's giving me some variations here. Variation two looks pretty nice and variation three looks really nice. So let me just toggle these on and off. That looks pretty good. Let me try it one more time, and this time we will use a prompt. Let's type in remove ladder. And it gives me a couple variations here. I think I like option three here the most. I mean, that took 30 seconds. So you can see how much time you're saving. And then if you really want to get nitpicky, you can then turn on the gin fill layer and now you could clone it yourself to make it a little bit easier. And I find that I'm actually using this feature a lot. This is an easy way to retouch and clean up some of your work. Now here's an image I've been working on. I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you the before and after to make this video a little bit more exciting. This is an image I shot in old San Juan and looks pretty nice, right? Simple portrait. But let me turn off the layers I've already created so you can see just how wild this is. Here is my final image, and here is the image I took out of camera. How crazy is that? So as you can see, I've extended the background, I've removed the car, I've actually gotten rid of some of the flyaways. Let me go ahead and crop this down so you can see exactly how I created this. So the first thing I wanted to do was get rid of this car, and if you've ever had to get rid of something this complicated with a perspective, it's very, very difficult. So I'm just going to use the lasso tool once again, like the last image, select that, and let's type in remove car. So there you go, the car's been removed, Photoshop has built back the sidewalk, it's done a very, very good job. Now let's zoom into our model's face, and removing flyaways in the studio is pretty easy, but when you have them against a complex background like this, it can become very, very difficult. So I've just selected the flyaways with the lasso tool. Let's come back up here, let's type in remove stray hairs. Using these prompts is where you're gonna find that sometimes putting more specific keywords in really does help the final result. And there we go, look at that. Let's toggle it on and off. You can see it's changed the background, but again, I don't think that you would notice it. If I were retouching this on my own, I would probably try just naturally to save the windows in the background and try to keep all of that. But what's interesting with Gin Phil as I toggle through some of these is that it doesn't really care what's in the background. It's just gonna generate something that it thinks looks correct. And in many cases, the viewer would have no idea that there's even a window back there. So this looks great. Look at that. 90 seconds, we removed a car and removed the flyaways. Now here's where I'm gonna show you tip number two, and that's extending the canvas. I'll give you a little preview on this image. I can come up here to canvas size. I believe I typed in 3000 and 2000 to keep it two by three ratio. And I used it so that it push all the pixels down to the bottom. And then simply by using the normal marquee tool here. You can just select the bottom, hit gen fill. I'm just gonna hit generate, see what it does. Now this is sometimes that time where you'll find that error where because you're dealing with legs and body parts, sometimes Photoshop says that it, it goes against their terms of service, which is really annoying. But if you use more keywords, I find that you can get around that. So here you can see the results. Look at that. I can turn this on and off and that looks pretty good. I can tell the cobblestones aren't quite right and it looks a little bit like she's a little too short because of the way that it did the perspective, but something like that doesn't look too bad. Let me see if I can do this next part a little quicker. I'm gonna highlight the left side, 
Now let's uh, hit shift and highlight the right side and just hit gen fill now. And hopefully we can get it to fill in both the left and the right. You'll notice I'm also making my selection go over the edges just a little bit so that we have a little bit of overlap. Sometimes if you need to retouch some of this out because it's creating a new layer, it helps to have that not quite on the edge. It gives you just a little bit of leeway. And look at that, that is freaking amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and select everything we just did and put it in a folder. And now if I turn that folder on and off, look how big of a difference that is. And as I showed at the beginning, if you didn't know any better, you would think that that is the full frame that I took, when in fact, this is the full frame here. Let me tell you about one of the worst photographic experiences of my entire career. Back in the day, I used to be a wedding photographer and I tried to minimize anything that could go wrong by always hiring a second shooter and in my bag always had at least three camera bodies. It was my idea to try to spread all of the images across the entire day on three cameras just in case anything went wrong. Now, of course, after the event, I thought everything had gone perfectly until 24 hours later when I loaded up all the images into Lightroom and lo and behold, a bunch of images were missing. What wound up happening was the night before, I failed to format the memory card. And so when my assistant grabbed that camera, he quickly filled up that memory card and then put the camera back in the camera bag when I picked that camera up and hit play, the last image that I saw was a photo shoot from months ago, and so I assumed it was safe to format the card. Little did I know, I had just deleted 300 wedding images and they were gone forever, or so I thought. If I had only known about Recover It by Wondershare, I could have spared myself that awkward moment when I had to call up my client and tell them that I had lost 300 images on the most important day of their lives. Wondershare's Recover It software is the sponsor of this video, and in the new version 12 update, it allows you to recover over a thousand different types of file formats on over 2,000 different storage devices. From portable SD cards to portable hard drives to massive NAS boxes, Recover It offers professional data recovery for all of your lost, damaged, or deleted files, including 4K and 8K video footage. A few of Recover It's newest features is you can now preview the data in real time before paying for an incomplete recovery. You can recover surveillance and dash cam footage, which is often stored for just a short period of time. And one of the best new features of Recover It version 12 is the enhanced recovery tool, which works specifically on video and photo files that often have their data stored in fragments across your SD cards. Recover It's enhanced recovery tool increases the likelihood that that recovered file will be 100% intact and usable. If you wanna get a free download and test drive Wondershare's Recover It software, click the link in the description below. And if Recover It has saved you from a total project disaster, I'd love to hear your story in the comments below. Hopefully it's not as bad as mine. All right, so here's an image I'm really excited to share with you because I think this really brings together everything and shows you just how powerful this tool can be in your own work. This is a photograph that I took. It already looks really AI to begin with because this scene is so crazy, but I promise you this cliff is just half a mile outside my house. Let me go ahead and turn off all the layers so that you can see what the actual image is. Can you guess what is real and what is not real? So this first layer here is just a blending of a sky. The second layer is the sky itself. These next two layers, they're just upsampling the files that you're creating with GenFill. I'll show you that here in a minute. So there's the original photograph that I took. This was actually a vertical image. And recently I printed my portfolio and there was many images like this where I wished I had taken them horizontally because they would fit in a book better, but of course, I didn't have that option and this software wasn't out at the time. But look, if I turn this on and off, I mean, that is unbelievable. And having been to this location, this area over here actually does go to a point. It obviously doesn't look like that exactly, but if you didn't know better and you had been to this location by memory, you'd probably think that that's exactly how it looks. So here, I'm just gonna zoom into the original file and just turn this on and off so that you can see what it's doing to build some of those pixels. So let me go ahead and put all of these in a folder just so that I have them for later. And just like the last image, the way that I built this was I just slowly kind of made selections and I went up here to gin fill and I don't think I even hit anything. I just hit generate and let's see what it does here live for you now. I mean, that looks pretty good. I'm going to make a really extreme selection here when I built it the first time. I did it piece by piece, but let's just see what it does if I select really a third of the image to the right. I mean, look at that. Look at that. That is incredible that it just built that. And it even put the sun in the right position. And of course we should have some variations here. 
I mean, that's kind of nice with the trees. This last one, it almost gives it a golf cart path and makes it look too accessible. I think I like the first one the most. And I found the left side here as we generate this was the most challenging because what it likes to do is make it not look like a cliff. Sometimes it wanted to add the beach. And so I really want to make sure that towards her feet, it has a sharp edge. So let's see what it does this time as we generate it once again. Hey, it actually did a really good job. As you can see down here, it still gives that angle that makes it feel like it's a cliff and not that she's standing right next to the water. So this little area is kind of tricky with the uh, perspective, but you can see the mountains, everything looks great. Let's look through some of the variations. And between the three, I kind of like this third one the most. I like the land terminating in the scene. It just kind of makes it feel more exotic and it also acts as a leading line, bringing you back to her. And to kind of finish this image off, I wanted to bring in a sky and replace the sky with one of my own images. Instead of having AI try to generate an image, I have a huge sky library. We actually produced a tutorial with Mike Kelly. You can check that out at fstoppers.com store. And basically he includes dozens, if not over a hundred different skies that you can input into your own work. And this is one of those skies. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to quickly just scale this up. I'm also going to come down to edit, transform, flip horizontally because I want the sun position to be matched. So you can see the sun in this stock photo is on the right. And then I'm just going to move this up to where I think it kind of fits. Go ahead and hit the marquee tool and I'm just going to delete out the horizon. We do not need that in there. And I can kind of just move this into place. Something like that looks pretty good. And what I did to create this image was I actually moved the sky up a little higher and I left this blank space right there. And I'm gonna just select part of the stock photo as well as the sky that we have in the bottom. Let's go ahead and hit Gen Fill. I'm just gonna hit Generate. And the goal for this is to use an image that I've put into the photograph and allow the AI to blend it in seamlessly. Let's see how this turns out. There we go, that looks perfect. So you can see if I turn this on and off, it has extended the clouds in the bottom of the frame and pushed them up into the stock image that I had. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just throw everything that we just did into another folder. And now if I toggle between the two, you can see here, this is the one we just created here in real time. And if I turn all those layers off, this is the one that I created on my own time. Two very different images to some degree, but both of them are using the same exact technique and both are very passable. Now I know what you guys are thinking. You're saying, Patrick, this was a super high res file and you just made these huge selections. There's no way that the generative fill files are high res and you would be right. Gen fill is only creating 1024 by 1024 square pixels. So if it has to blow that up because you have a large file like I do, the resolution isn't gonna be great. Now, if you have a file like this where I shot at 2.8 and much of the background is actually out of focus, you're not gonna see that difference in quality as much as if you were shooting at F8 and you have all of this detail. But I found a really cool workaround from this and this comes from the Photoshop Cafe channel. And without going into detail, I'm gonna put a link in the description below. You can go check it out. There's actually an easy way to make an action where you create a 1024 by 1024 selection and you have the action generate each little panel that overlaps slightly one by one by one. And so by running this action, you can just hit go, grab a cup of coffee, and when you come back, all of those pixels will be upsized and they will look much better. So here you can see that's these pixels are pretty blurry. Again, I don't know that you would really notice this unless you were zooming in at 100%, but if you use this automated action, Look how much higher res these pixels are. You can really see a difference here. You could tell that these leaves are nice and sharp, but down here they blend in pretty well, but they're very, very soft. If I turn on the action file, you can see again, it's changed the pixels, but look how sharp these leaves are. There are a few little areas where it just generated some kind of blurry mess, but overall this looks way better. So if you wanna automate all of this, it's easy to do in a horizontal row or in a vertical row, 
go check out the Photoshop Cafe channel in the link below and he shows you exactly how you can build that. So I think that image is a great example of just how powerful this tool is. The final little tip I wanna share with you is how you can take multiple files that you've taken out on location and blend them together when they would be near impossible to blend together on your own. If you're a type of photographer that shoots backplates that you use for composite work, this is probably the greatest advancement for you ever because this tool makes your life so much easier. So here are some vertical images that I've taken for backplates. I usually like to take vertical images and then I'll take a series of them so I can stitch them together to make a really high res image. But for the sake of this, let's just combine maybe two or three of these in an interesting way. So I've aligned these images. I think this looks pretty cool. There's elements of each image that I like, and maybe this is how you want your backplate to look. But if I had to blend these together, it would be an absolute nightmare. One thing I failed is this image does have light from the opposite direction. So I'm gonna flip horizontally so that the light is all coming in from the same direction. So there you go. I think this is really useful if you're a composite photographer, but I could also see this being used on landscape photography. If you're the type of photographer that likes to shoot more abstract landscapes and you don't want that same shot of Kirk Jafel the way that everybody shot it, maybe you could use something like this to add little elements to make your landscape work a little different and a little bit more abstract. Is that breaking the line of ethical code? I don't know. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This stuff's really interesting and I really think that we are living in the golden age, both of photography and now photo manipulation. Some of you might think that this is the total end of photography. I don't know that I'm there yet, but if you think this is really harmful for the industry, leave your comments below. Also, if you wanna help our channel, don't necessarily subscribe, although I would appreciate that. Instead, go to the search bar and type in f-stoppers and literally watch any video that pops up from that search. That will help the algorithms put our channel more in the forefront, and I think it's gonna help the channel in the long run. If you guys wanna support f-stoppers, head over to fstoppers.com and read our free daily content. You can also head over to fstoppers.com slash store and check out our full length tutorials. We have photography tutorials and everything from landscape photography, headshots, swimwear, product photography, architectural photography. There's a little bit of something for everybody, and if you can't make up your mind, definitely check out The Well-Rounded Photographer. It's a tutorial with eight instructors all in one. That's really cool. And also, finally, keep an eye out for, yes, Alaya Licardi's back with Photographing the World Japan. It's literally coming out any day now, and I can't wait for you guys to see this next big project we've been working on. In the meantime, I will see you guys very soon, and enjoy Photoshop Generative Fill.